Well, good day and welcome back to you. Well, I have here an Olivetti Studio 44. This typewriter was given to me maybe over a year ago by a local collector. He gave it to me because it's missing the carriage return lever. Actually, though, I have the carriage return lever. The problem is the shaft that rotates when you operate the lever is sheared off. And so I've been using this typewriter. The way I do it is I pull the carriage back and click, 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 twist the platen knob to do the carriage return. And actually it's just about as fast as operating the lever itself if it were actually intact. And so uh, I've been enjoying this typewriter. One thing about this machine though is it's not the classic turquoise blue Olivetti. It's tan colored, but sometimes you have to get what you get in terms of body color. And also it has a rather distinctive typeface. It's a very nice typeface for writing letters. But I put a notice out to my local typewriter repair shop, John Lewis, here in Albuquerque, for him to be on the lookout for a potential parts machine that I might be able to use to make the carriage return working again on this machine. And last week, I went down to his shop just on a visit, and sure enough, he had a Studio 44 waiting for me. And this is the machine, and it has a functioning carriage return lever. Well, when I got this machine, it was in its case, and the case was extremely dirty with all kinds of like red clay-like dust and dirt. In fact, the machine itself was caked inside and out with the kind of red dust or clay that you might see in the canyon lands of the American West, as if it had been in an outbuilding or a garage for years. But mechanically, it was in pretty good shape, no rust, and the rubber parts are actually pretty decent. And so knowing that the carriage return system is really difficult to rebuild on these machines, in fact, John told me that it was a job that he wouldn't really want to do himself, and so I decided the first thing I would do is maybe clean the machine up. And it took me over the period of about a week, several days of concentrated effort, including yesterday, I spent a lot of time outside with this using PB blaster and lacquer thinner and compressed air. And I got it working pretty darn good. So I'd like to talk to you today about parts machines. Should we strip them out or should we try to restore them? Well, the tan, armless Studio 44 on your right has an Italian keyboard and was made in Invria, Italy. And it operates really nicely and has a really beautiful typeface. While this Studio 44 on your left is branded as an Underwood Olivetti, same body style. It was made in Barcelona, Spain. It has a more conventional Pica style typeface and operates really about the same in terms of the touch or feel. Keeping in mind, of course, that there are differences, even the same model between two different samples might feel slightly differently. So the tan one has black keys, and of course the uh, blue one has these gray keys. The blue one looks like it got a lot of use because most of the letter keys, the more commonly used keys, if you catch the reflection of light off the surface of the keycaps, they're kind of irregular shaped and shiny, whereas the lesser used keys are more smoothly dished in and more kind of a matte finish. So there is certainly a lot of wear going on, probably a person with long fingernails. So this got a lot of use, certainly. So I should mention also, one of the other differences between these two machines, besides what I've mentioned earlier, is this one has a black metallic card guide in the middle of the carriage area, whereas this one has the wire bale style card guide and plastic card guides that are wider, that go almost the full width of the carriage, where this one doesn't have those plastic pieces. So a little bit of a difference there between the two machines. What was intended to be a parts machine, upon further reflection, upon acquiring the machine, it's really difficult to take apart the carriage return system and to replace that drive shaft that the carriage return arm is connected to. So if I had known that to begin with, I probably wouldn't have asked John Lewis for a parts machine. On the other hand, I wouldn't have got this machine either. So 
I wanted to talk a little bit about the work that I did on this machine. There was a few things I had to do to it besides cleaning it. So you might notice these scratches on the ribbon cover on this machine. And those were caused by the fact that the bottom of the carriage return lever was dragging on the ribbon cover. And that was caused by the top surface of this rectangular casting was worn down a little bit, as well as the inside of the carriage return lever itself. So what I had to do is I had to epoxy a tiny little shim of brass on top of that to build it up a little bit higher so now the carriage return lever sits high enough that it doesn't rub on the cover. And now you can see there's plenty of clearance between the bottom of the carriage return lever and the ribbon cover. So another thing that you may have to adjust on one of these machines is the plastic card guides, if yours has them, they may not be resting close enough to the platen. And if you have to adjust that, this bracket on each side for each respective plastic card guide, you can use a bending tool here and slightly bend this angle so it's a little bit closer to the platen like that. And then you can uh, loosen these two mounting screws for each of the clear guides and you can adjust the left, right, and up-down position of this guide so that these vertical tick marks are centered on the center of each character and the horizontal marks are right at the bottom of the character is where the typing line is. And if you do that, it'll be a lot easier for you to realign the paper if you removed it from the machine and have to put it back in because your typing line will be much more accurate. Once the clear card guides are adjusted properly, you should be able to feed the paper in and it should feed directly under the rollers like that without you having to lift the paper bale. So to remove the body shell off of the chassis, you want to take out this screw and this screw on both sides and then you'll be able to remove the body shell. You'll do so by moving the carriage fully to the left as far as it'll go, making sure the right margin adjustment is fully to the right. And this will give you room to lift up the right side of the body and take it off toward the left like that. To reinstall the body shell, you want to make sure that you fit this curved cutout in the left side of the body around the round tabulator shaft. And then once it's fitted around there, you can fold the body shell back onto the chassis. And of course you want to remove the four feet from the machine and then you can take off the bottom panel also. So another repair I did is this right hand paper support finger was flopping around really loose and what I did is I had to pull off this whole margin rack and paper scale and then I was able to compress the rivet that holds this finger in place by putting it against a metal anvil and hitting it with a thin peening hammer to tighten up that rivet so now it doesn't flop around. So one thing I should point out about Olivetti machines, all the ones I've owned, all the letters and the Studio 44s, etc. The line spacing indicators here are not actually the number of lines that it moves to. So number one is single line spacing, but the number two is one and a half line spacing, number three is double line spacing, and number four is triple line spacing. So this is really just like labels for each line spacing position, but not the number of lines it moves it to. And that's because this is a half line machine. So for instance, on single line spacing, it's two clicks, two half line clicks. And if you go all the way up to the four position, it is one, two, three, four, five, six half lines, which is three. So it's not one through four lines, it's one, one and a half, two, and three. And of course the zero position back here is for the disconnect for the line spacing. So now it will disconnect the line spacing, but you can go back and go back to your original line spacing before. That's the temporary line spacing disconnect or the universal variable. The permanent line spacing disconnect is by pushing in the middle of the left platen knob. Well, there's an old saying, never look a gift horse in the mouth, but in this case, you should look at a donor machine for parts very closely because you might find that it's actually in good enough shape to not ruin but instead restore to good operating order as I was able to do here. So instead of having one machine, I have now two 
Olivetti Studio 44s, both of them working well. Two different typefaces, two different body colors. One of them with a Italian keyboard, this one with an American style keyboard. This one's branded as Underwood Olivetti. The other one branded as just Olivetti. So it's nice to have a variety of the same model, especially if it's something like a Studio 44, which I think were the best of the portable Olivetti typewriters. Yeah, they're big, they're a big portable, but I think they're great machines. How about you? I'd love to hear your comments down below about if you have a Studio 44 and how you like it. And also, if you've had the experience of having a machine that you intended to be a parts machine, but it ended up being another good machine in your collection as this one is now. In any event, I wish you well, stay creative, and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.